Great. Well, welcome everyone to our business case for EQ webinar. And uh, we're going to just um, st uh, be going through how emotional intelligence uh, creates value in organizations in a variety of different ways. And uh, just so we're on the same page, simple definition of emotional intelligence here. And uh, what we are seeing in this research is that there's many levels at which emotional intelligence, being smarter with feelings, uh, drives performance. And uh, to just sort of lay out the case in simple terms, we can say what we're trying to do in, a, in any organization, whether it's a business organization or a hospital or anything, a school, we're trying to increase value, increase value for all of the stakeholders involved. And in some way, we recognize that the customer experience uh, is what creates that value. When our customers uh, are getting what they want and more, then uh, we have that value. And that in some way, the climate, the environment inside the organization is what creates those conditions for those delighted customers. And emotional intelligence of leaders seems to be the driving force. And so if we connect those dots, we really have uh, the summary of the case for emotional intelligence. There are four steps. As leaders develop their EQ, they're able to create this context where people can really be and do their best. That turns into a better relationship and product and experience for customers, and that turns into value. So we'll go through these four steps. And uh, I'll start with the first one. Uh, really, the point here is that leadership is a people business. And that it's not uh, enough to just focus on the tasks and the technicalities. What we're seeing is in the case is many, many studies showing that the relational components of leadership, the ability to engage your own emotions effectively so that you're balanced and you're able to navigate the complexities yourself and that you have the kind of relational skills that let you show up with and for people and have them feel that sense of support uh, creates value. So just one of the pieces of research in the study. This is a really beautiful uh, study where they um, looked at um, Navy officers. And what's so important about this study is that they controlled for IQ and managerial and technical competence as well as emotional intelligence. And what you can see here is that with these officers, what determined or what differentiated the uh, great leaders, the best leaders, what differentiated them was uh, emotional intelligence considerably more than any of the other factors. And we've seen this kind of finding numerous times. Paul. Oops, did we lose Paul? Uh, no, I kept getting a strange message. So Josh is talking about creating this climate in the organization. We might think of culture uh, as the full expression of this, but the climate really is the sense that people get when they go to work every day. What are the feelings that are uh, engendered? What is the weather like in your organization? Uh, and how do you feel about the the, the forecast, how do you feel about uh, what's happening you know, today? It's really a mat about the people side of performance when it comes to EQ and people engagement. The um, drivers of organizational uh, effectiveness can really accommodate the, uh, the kind of positive engaged culture that we're uh, talking about. And really, uh, when it uh, comes right down to it, it's creating a sense of energy, um, inspiring collaboration among team members, uh, getting things done in a very uh, effective way, uh, being able to grapple with uh, transformation in the organization in a particularly uh, volatile business uh, environment, and finally having uh, faith in others. Uh, that uh, they're going to do uh, what they say they're going to do. And as a leader, how can you uh, create that sense of trustworthiness uh, that you need to uh, convey to get others to 
uh, relate to you in the way that's going to enhance the uh, workplace climate. And Paul, I love the term we use for this, vitality. It's like this living, high energy environment. And what the studies are showing is that um, the leader's emotional intelligence is a key component and employees' emotional intelligence is a key component in creating that thriving, vital space. Great. So this is a, um, a snapshot. Jo Josh, if you go to the next slide. Um, of an intervention that was done in um, uh, an, the Italian uh, plant of Komatsu, which is a major manufacturer of uh, heavy equipment. They were really uh, in a period of economic stagnation. They didn't know uh, what they could do. They weren't prepared uh, for what was going to happen next. So um, they called in uh, some folks. Uh, to do um, an, interv an intervention and really look at the, uh, the workplace climate there. And those are the drivers uh, that I was uh, referring to. And we can measure those with our, our tools. And this uh, bar graph depicts what happened before and after that intervention. And you can see uh, substantial uh, increases in their uh, scores on all of these five key uh, drivers of organizational uh, performance. This went along with a, a more than 200% uh, percent increase in their uh, engagement uh, index, the overall sense of engagement among uh, all of the, the participants at the plant, and most gratifying for us and for uh, the folks at uh, Komatsu Italy was that during this same period, they realized a 9.4% improvement in plant efficiency. That's the bottom line uh, payoff to focusing on emotional intelligence in the workplace. So we can see the first two points in this value chain. The leader's EQ uh, is enabling them to uh, differentiate as leaders, to show up as leaders, not just people with a job title, and that Working with leaders uh, in this way creates a higher performing climate, uh, which has bottom line results. So step three. Yeah. Focusing on the customer and really um, empowering uh, people in the, uh, the organization to uh, take uh, ownership of what needs uh, to be done, giving them the tools and their uh, insight into their own uh, emotional uh, quotient, uh, if you will, uh, when they gain uh, those insights and those skills, they are able to uh, deliver absolutely superb uh, customer service. And uh, engaged employees uh, equals delighted customers, but delighted customers also reinforce the sense of engagement that the employees have. So this is a wonderful uh, reciprocal uh, cycle. Um, by cultivating a shared vision, uh, increasing your focus on the customer, uh, having a clear uh, value-driven service orientation. Uh, we talked about empathy uh, at, the, at the beginning, having a real sense of connection uh, to others that goes beyond the sort of artificial uh, barriers of your job uh, description, um, creates leaders at all levels in the organization, um, increases resilience, agility, and adaptability as uh, employees everywhere focus on delivering added value through customer service. This is a wonderful example of two uh, principles that we emphasize in the, uh, in the business case. One, EQ can be taught and learned. And uh, once that uh, occurs, it can have a profound and uh, significant effect on bottom line uh, performance. This was a study that was done at a major uh, pharmaceutical uh, firm. Uh, they randomly assigned salespeople to a group that received EQ training and a group uh, that didn't, a control group. And what they discovered was um, remarkably that the, um, not only did the, the, the group that received the EQ training 
uh, increase their uh, scores on an objective measure of EQ by um, 18%. But you can see on this graph the differential in terms of the sales volume that that uh, trained group was able to create. The bottom line for this firm was that they realized a six to one return on investment uh, on their training dollars in terms of about two million uh, in uh, dollars in additional uh, sales revenue uh, every month. That sounds well worthwhile. <laughs> really? And, you know, in this case, this is a, a beautiful case um, that uh, makes this value chain that we're talking about uh, so clear. Um, and it's hard to get to this, you know, last stage, this bottom line stage, because in research, I mean, first of all, uh, there are all these other variables. I mean, we have a case in the, um, in the business case about this uh, Sheraton Hotel where market share went up 24%. Well, I mean, what was that from, you know, over the course of a year? Was it just the EQ training? I mean, that's what the uh, general manager said, is that, that, you know, he attributed the growth to that. But it's really hard to actually, from a research perspective, um, directly connect the intervention to the result. And, and in that uh, Sanofi Adventist case, it, it did a really beautiful job of that. Uh, there's also um, the Amadori case, which some of you will be familiar with uh, from reading just that case. But it, it's in the business case. And again, in this study, we're able to see this golden thread that we're talking about here from leader EQ improving uh, the environment, improving the climate, and we're measuring both of those things in this case. Uh, and then um, the impact on the bottom line. And what we saw in this case, and there, there's more about it in, in the business case um, ebook, but what we saw in this case is this correlation between managers' social intelligence, managerial performance, uh, and plant performance. And there was a correlation between managerial performance and engagement inside the organization. Sorry, between manager EQ and engagement inside the organization. And so there seems to be, as we've been talking here, this kind of chain that's built where leaders are better with people, they create a better environment, they do a better job on, on, on uh, serving whoever their customers are, and then that creates this uh, uh, bottom line result. Uh, it may be that uh, you know, we'll, we'll be able to find more studies like this and of course, if any of you have a possibility where we can get this kind of you know, data on the actual results in an organization, um, please talk to Paul. We'd love to work with you on building that case. The, the bottom line here in many of these cases is that when we have the capabilities inside the organization to work with people, engagement goes up. And when engagement goes up, performance goes up. And I think that's a pretty simple formula. This is a wonderful quote that I'll let you uh, read by, uh, you know, clearly one of the, uh, the business uh, leaders. And it really is about the fact that um, leadership is a people business. Uh, and people are not just uh, rational, despite uh, our, our, our wishes that that were, uh, that were true. Cultivating social skills, being smarter with feelings, focusing on positive relationships, not falling into the trap that change is just a linear a uh, process that uh, is purely rational and we can affect change by just tinkering with uh, the systems that we use in our organizations, um, but that it's a dynamic uh, process that you must uh, focus on uh, people and uh, their, their, emotional, uh, their emotional world, their emotional life that they do not leave at the doorstep when they come to work. You know, we see in a lot of organizations a statement like, you know, people are our number one asset. But in fact, in almost every organization, people are a cost, not an asset. And they're treated that way. And, uh, and you think about in a very large organization how digitized people become and how transactional the process is. And I think the point here is 
when we lose sight of that human dimension, uh, we lose the capability to really optimize value. Value is created in part by people. And I think, you know, in a lot of organizations, by patents or value is created by um, widgets or value is created by bricks and mortar. And I think what we're seeing in this research and in our experience around the world is that increasingly uh, in a highly competitive landscape and in a landscape where business is changing so rapidly that people and these relationships are what differentiate performance. And it's hard to remember that in the day-to-day hustle bustle of all the tasks that we're doing. In the chat, Yoshi mentioned the challenge of increasing stress. I think as stress increases, we tend to become more transactional. And interestingly, of course, when stress increases, that's when we most need to be more focused on people and emotions. So there's one more set of uh, research in the case, which we're not going to go into. But Paul and I both thought was just such an important point and such great news, which is that we see uh, in the case Paul shared before, but in many cases, which we talk about in, in the uh, ebook, that emotional intelligence is learnable. Now, it depends uh, a little bit on how you define emotional intelligence and what tools you use, but in uh, many of these cases, in using six seconds tools, using other tools, we can see that these skills are learnable and they're measurable. What that means is we've talked about that, that these skills create value and the notion that we can measure that, which means we can select for it and we can promote for it, uh, we can recruit for it, and we can make sure that people are, uh, we're supporting people to develop those. And there's some great examples in the ebook about how that development can work and we have other cases that talk in more detail about that. But the fact that there's this really valuable building block for the people side of performance that can be measured and learned, I think uh, should give us all a lot of hope about the future of our organizations. Can you comment on that, Paul? That's the bottom line, I think, for, uh, you know, for, for businesses and somehow uh, cultivating that sense of optimism in a world that, uh, you know, uh, causes us to be pessimistic on so many fronts. I think that's what's truly liberating about this work. So our bottom line? <laughs> the, uh, um, the business case is available uh, today. Uh, there's the, um, the URL. Uh, you can uh, fill in a short form and download uh, the full uh, brand new uh, ebook. And we've also put together a presentation uh, kit. You may want to follow up, use uh, this uh, research, use these findings, use these cases in your own uh, practice or perhaps in your own organizations. And uh, the kit is a to uh, spread, spread the word and add your own uh, experience uh, to, uh, to the rich uh, cases that are uh, recounted here. Yeah, I'll just put in a plug for that presentation kit. I think any of you who are uh, wanting to help make the case for emotional intelligence, the kit does, I, I think, a really beautiful job um, of laying out some of these factors. There are a couple of short videos in it. Uh, and there's a really strong exercise where the participants really build the case themselves. And I think that's so important because what we've seen is, you know, the data isn't enough. What people need is to experience it and internalize it and synthesize it. So I encourage you to uh, get the ebook for free and to buy the kit if uh, you want to share it with others. Uh, I think you'll find it really useful. So we were pretty good at sticking to our uh, self-imposed Uh, just just before we started, challenged us to uh, come up with a final thought. And um, in reflecting back on uh, everything that's covered in the uh, in the business case, I think my final thought is to put people at the center of everything we do as EQ 
inspired leaders. I think if we're able to do that, uh, we can both transform ourselves and transform uh, the organizations that we uh, work in. My final thought is that uh, emotions are part of your organizational capital, emotional capital. And I think trust is the currency. And if you look at the uh, dynamics of trust in your organization, where are you building it? Where are you undermining it? Uh, you can map that, that current, you can map that value that's part of uh, the value of, of what you're creating in your organization. And it's, it's when you use these measures and you start making this data real, it, it allows you to have the conversations that you need to have in order to create the transparency that will, will build that trust and keep this uh, essential ingredient in focus. So thank Great. you all for joining. And Paul, we're gonna stay on for a while now for um, Q&A and chat. But, uh, and I guess we, you know, we might as well leave the recording going in case anybody sure. wants to watch the Q&A. But uh, for those of you who are watching the recording and we're in for 20 minutes, you're done. And <laughs> anybody, who's, uh, anybody who is uh, you know, on the clock for 20 minutes, goodbye. Thank you for joining us. And 